Hail. Today is December 12th. Lagadog. Lotherdog. Saturday. Walking in my pasture again this morning. And I want to address something that I'm seeing a lot of discussion about amongst our folk. And that is death. Something that we should not be focused on. We're alive. That's what we should be focused on. However, I do see some people saying that. That too many people are concerned about death and we should be concerned about living and how we're affecting things around us. That is 100% true, but it's only half the story. And the reason it's only half the story is because of what the Abrahamic cults have done to our belief system. Now, I'll explain this with the two brother cults of Christianity and Islam are really death cults. They're focused on you get one shot, one time through life, and you better have that salvation. You better, you know, be facing Mecca, you know, whatever on your knees, whatever their their uh, end game is, is always once you're done here, it's then eternity in an afterlife with their Jewish God. And the Jews, who are the father cult of the trio, their father to the two brothers, don't believe in either one of them. It's, uh, it's a really odd mixture that they have going on there, that, that trinity of, of Abrahamic foreign religions. However, that finality of death has done damage to our ancestral belief system. And the Jews do not really recognize that. If you look at some of their texts and some of their writings, they believe what our ancestors originally believed. Now, our folk have been in Europe for, I'm just going to use it, it's circa 40,000 years. We have evidence for 40,000 years which we know it goes back further than that, but that's just what we have the evidence for, so that's the number I'll use. So our folk and our folk beliefs are tens of thousands of years older than any and all of those Abrahamic cults. So anything that I state and reflect upon with any of the three of them, that's a theft or a plagiarism and an adaptation of our ancient ancestral beliefs into their cult. But going back to my original thought was the Jews believe that they get reincarnated into the next life. See, that's why their New World Order scheme works for them because they take, in this life, they take the ball and they run with it. And then when they die, even if they haven't gotten to that New World Order paradigm utopia that they want, it doesn't matter because they know the soul is eternal. And their next life, their next them, will pick up the ball and run with it. So they, in the long run, will get to enjoy their Jewish utopia that they think they're creating because they know a future them will be part of it. Now, like I said, that is a plagiarism, a theft, an adaptation from our belief, which is much, much older than any of them. I put out a video uh, a few days ago, a week ago, talking about Frith. Frith was extremely important to our people. Our soul, our folk soul is eternal. Our individual soul is eternal in no need of salvation. We 
reincarnate ourselves. We don't know we're reincarnating ourselves until uh, we until we do it, and then we seek out that wisdom and knowledge, and then we add to our soul during our lifetime. It is a process focused on life and death because if we don't realize our soul is eternal, then we always think that we're just a flash in the pan. And then what? And then the Christian doctrine of, you know, you have this one short life and then eternity elsewhere. Our lore points to a regeneration through our own frith. So whatever soul I possess is my filgia, my my fetch, my my soul has been possessed by previous ancestors of mine, previous frith. Now, if I go through a life as a Christian, then I will never realize my previous deeds. I will never have access to the power of those things and continue their efforts. It'll always be a new thing, a new person that is now struggling through life and then if they've been converted to the false foreign Abrahamic cult, then their entire past in that regard gets tossed aside. We have people, our folk, in the Christian cult who believe their God of Jesus, whether he's actual or not, I personally don't feel as though he was an actual living person that was physically nailed to a cross. He's a concept to subjugate. But they feel as though they have won the battle because... Well, most of the world, if you add up those three Abrahamic cults, are dominated by them. And the two most popular ones are subservient to the father cult. But using, just, using their own text in just one simple regard, if, if a person in battle wins a couple of the couple of the battles, let's say it's a day and a half, a day and a half to two days, the enemy is attacking. And they're succeeding. They're pushing your forces back, and they're succeeding. And then you get reinforcements, and you start fighting back, and you start defeating them, and overcoming them, and, and gaining more reinforcements as you go, and keep pushing them back further and further. You start learning their secrets, how they operate. You start infiltrating them. Then, who really won that overall battlefield? Wasn't the two days that they may have been pushing you back. The final outcome was when you were ultimately victorious over them when you started getting your reinforcements and pushing back against them. Well... A day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as a day. Christianity has been around for about a day and a half then. Now, you can't claim victory. So, our soul being eternal means we have endured. All those people who possessed my soul as their soul in their lifetime at the time they were alive experienced all those things. When I got it, I have their experiences. I have their wisdom. I have their knowledge. I have their passion. I have to access it. And then I add or I detract from it. If I loathe myself, like you see so many of our folk doing today, and I abandon it, then my soul has got to be destroyed by our gods and goddesses. It's got to be. It's got to be refashioned into something new which makes perfect sense when you look at what the Abrahamic cults are doing to us. They're making 
our folk think and feel this hatred for their own culture and their own self so that they want to destroy it and become something new that has no passion, that has no strength to it, has no history to it. So when we talk about our eternal soul, we have to talk about death. And then we have to talk about life because it's a life reborn can't stress this enough if we are going to be victorious against all of these these forces that want to destroy us as a people we have got to realize the eternal nature of our soul that does not need salvation it does not need to forget about its past it needs to remember its past grab on to its past and then go forward just like the Jews stole from us the Jews are atheistic as far as believing in their Jehovah, yet they claim to be a chosen people. They're atheistic as far as Allah or Jesus, but yet they have this tribal mentality and the belief that a future them will succeed in their efforts. They stole that from us, and then they used their other two children brother cults, Islam and Christianity, to ensure that we lost that power of eternality of our soul, that we do not have that access to that wisdom, knowledge, strength, frith it will be a long battle continually uphill if we do not access our past so yes this life is about life and all of our previous lives with it I can't tell you how to access your previous soul. How, who, who had it? What did they do? That is you. That is on you. Follow your name. Follow your heritage where you come from. If you can't find one, then maybe you are new. Maybe you just need to take in the whole picture move your soul forward so that when your posterity is in their life and they possess your soul, your frith to your own soul has improved it, has not questioned it, has not cast it aside. It is on a level that nothing can touch. You have frith to yourself and to every person that has added to your soul throughout history. And remember, all we know of, of that your soul is going back 40,000 years. There was others before that. Okay, we have the, the, the battles of Christianity and our pagan homelands. We have those documented by Christian writers and we, everything is seen through a Christian lens. But we have before that, we have all of the joys and the trials of life, of our previous life as part of who we are, as part of our DNA. We must realize the eternality of our soul. Move on with our eyes on the future so that when we act in the present, we're acting with the wisdom and knowledge of our past to improve our future, not to be slaves to a one world system because somebody else realizes that their soul is eternal and they're controlling us. 
I don't want a future soul of mine that one of my descendants will will own will possess it will be their soul I will be part of that frith I, I possess that soul before them I don't want that future me to be a slave to some Abrahamic cult that doesn't even believe I possess a soul think about it we lived in the past for tens of thousands of years we lived in the past we saw through different eyes we lived in different lands we ate different food we honored our old gods our ancestral gods not through any lens that was provided for us and now here we are today the same soul it's been added to it's ours now do you remember it do you care about it that's your frith you are one part of that whole one part of that whole philgia through the ages back in time and then now and then into the future to your posterity how much does it mean to you they are depending on you and so is your future your future self your posterity Hail our gods and goddesses. Hail our ancestors. Vassail. Sequenced uh, the genome of a 37,000 year old individual from Europe, meaning it's one of the oldest modern humans found in Europe. And uh, this genome basically reveals three different things. First of all, and this is very surprising, we can see that all the major genetic components present in, in, in living day Europeans were already present in Europeans 37,000 years ago. And that changes the whole concept of how Europe was populated, where we previously thought, well, it was massive movements of people from outside into Europe providing genes. Now it is, it, it, the data suggests, no, there was like this major population of people stretching all the way from Europe to Central Asia, exchanging genes in a very complex network with each other, 